local public health guidelines. Our projections show that we must decrease our social contacts in order to stop the spread of the virus. I know that it's no fun. People miss their gyms, which are temporarily closed, and they're looking forward to dinner parties. But these local public health guidelines, our projections show that we must decrease our social contacts in order to stop the spread of the virus. I know that it's no fun. People miss their gyms, which are temporarily closed, and they're looking forward to dinner parties. But these measures are temporary until the numbers become manageable again. The federal government and other levels of government are temporary until the numbers become manageable again. The federal government and other levels of government are asking you to respect these measures because it is important to work as a team. On our side, we continue to support provinces and territories in their fight against the virus. These measures, because it is important to work as a team. On our side, we continue to support provinces and territories in their fight against the virus. To date, we have distributed nearly 1.6 billion rapid tests across the contributed, nearly 1.6 billion rapid tests across the country, and there will be more to come in the next weeks and months. The last few weeks have been tough for everyone, but for some people, things have been especially hard. Indigenous country, and there will be more to come, in the, the next weeks, weeks and months. Been tough for everyone, but for some people, things have been especially hard. Indigenous peoples and communities continue to face unique challenges during this pandemic. Our government is working in partnership with communities to address that and to ensure that everyone continue to face unique challenges during this pandemic. Our government is working in partnership with communities to address that and to ensure that everyone has the support they need. Access to safe and culturally relevant early learning and childcare is essential to the recovery of Indigenous communities from COVID-19. Access to safe and culturally relevant early learning and childcare is essential to the recovery of Indigenous communities from COVID-19. To support First Nations, Inuit and Métis Nation children, we will invest over $120 million to help Indigenous communities address their most critical needs, including to support First Nations, Inuit, and Métis Nation children, we will invest over $120 million to help Indigenous communities address their most critical needs, including hiring additional staff and offering training for early learning and child care facilities. Today, I can announce, also announce that we will invest over 25 million additional staff and offering training for early learning and child care facilities. Today, I can announce, also announce that we will invest over $25 million to help Indigenous post-secondary institutions with increased costs related to the pandemic. This will help retain staff, adapt courses for online learning, Indigenous post-secondary institutions with increased costs related to the pandemic. This will help retain staff, adapt courses for online learning, and implement public health and safety measures, like additional hand-washing stations and safe space barriers. Finally, to keep people of every age safe, safety measures like additional hand washing stations and safe space barriers. Finally, to keep people of every age safe, we will also provide $59 million to improve infrastructure in First Nations communities in order to meet a range of COVID-19 health and safety standards. We will also provide $59 million to improve infrastructure in First Nations communities in order to meet a range of COVID-19 health and safety standards. This builds on the work already being done through the Indigenous Community Support Fund. Moving forward, we will continue to work with communities on what they need to protect people. It's on the work already being done through the Indigenous Community Support Fund. Moving forward, we will continue to work with communities on what they need to protect people from this virus. Depuis le début, 
From the start, our fight against COVID-19 has been guided by science. Our government is working. From the start, our fight against COVID-19 has been guided by science. Our government is working very closely with the scientific community in order to meet urgent needs and to develop more tools to fight against other potential pandemics in order to meet urgent needs and to develop more tools to fight against other potential pandemics. On this subject, we are pleased to announce new funding through Canadian research to rise to COVID. On this subject, we are pleased to announce new funding through Canadian research to rise to COVID-19 challenges and the Canada Innovative Solutions Program. Six research and development programs have been chosen. Some of them aimed and the Canada Innovative Solutions Program. Six research and development programs have been chosen. Some of them aim to develop rapid tests to detect COVID-19 using saliva samples. New investment from the National Research Council of Canada. We will also detect COVID-19 using saliva samples. New investment from the National Research Council of Canada. We will also invest $2.5 million in a study on the rate of COVID-19 infection in travelers entering the country. These funds will allow researchers from McMaster also invest $2.5 million in a study on the rate of COVID-19 infection in travelers entering the country. These funds will allow researchers from McMaster University to continue their important work. This is part of our commitment to keep people safe and to support Canadian scientists. Notre gouvernement to continue their important work. This is part of our commitment to keep people safe and to support Canadian scientists. Notre gouvernement travaille fort. Our government is working hard so that workers, families, and business owners are not left to their own devices in facing this crisis, and is working hard so that workers, families, and business owners are not left to their own devices in facing this crisis. Earlier this month, we announced that we would strengthen and adjust support programs for workers and businesses. Not only is it the right thing to do, that we would strengthen and adjust support programs for workers and businesses. Not only is it the right thing to do, but these measures are also essential to give us a strong position. We need to have enough workers to maintain supply chains. But these measures are also essential to give us a strong position. We need to have enough workers to maintain supply chains, allow businesses to expand and create more jobs for Canadians. Whether in long-term care homes, the tech sector, or local restaurants, this crisis has helped businesses to expand and create more jobs for Canadians. Whether in long-term care homes, the tech sector, or local restaurants, this crisis has highlighted the important contributions that newcomers make to our communities. So many sectors of our economy rely on their talent and dedication, contributions that newcomers make to our communities. So many sectors of our economy rely on their talent and dedication. Today, Minister Mendicino will present a plan on immigration and citizenship to help with our short-term economic recovery while also ensuring Canada's long-term prospects. We'll present a plan on immigration and citizenship to help with our short-term economic recovery while also ensuring Canada's long-term prosperity. We must continue to pursue measured and responsible growth in this area to drive Canada's successes. I look forward to hearing more from the Minister in Sparity. We must continue to pursue measured and responsible growth in this area to drive Canada's successes. I look forward to hearing more from the Minister in his announcement later this afternoon. Avant la fin de semaine, 
Before the weekend, I would like to repeat how important it is to continue our efforts later this afternoon. Before the weekend, I would like to repeat how important it is to continue our efforts to fight the second wave. Yesterday, nearly 3,000 new cases were reported in the country. The situation is serious and wave. Yesterday, nearly 3,000 new cases were reported in the country. The situation is serious, and it's not the time to stop following measures. Wash your hands, wear a mask, maintain social distancing, and download the free COVID app as almost stop following measures. Wash your hands, wear a mask, maintain social distancing, and download the free COVID app as almost 5 million people have already done. As of today, the COVID alert app has been updated to be even more effective. If you test positive, you can now enter... As five million people have already done. As of today, the COVID alert app has been updated to be even more effective. If you test positive, you can now enter the date your symptoms started and when you, get test you got tested. This will provide even better information about when people may have been the most infectious further strengthening your symptoms started and when you, get test you got tested. This will provide even better information about when people may have been the most infectious, further strengthening the impact and accuracy of this app. As always, these new features are optional and the information provided will not be shared in order to protect your privacy. Accuracy of this app. As always, these new features are optional and the information provided will not be shared in order to protect your privacy. So if you haven't already, join the almost 5 million Canadians who have downloaded the free COVID alert app from the App Store or from Google Play. Finally, the almost 5 million Canadians who have downloaded the free COVID alert app from the App Store or from Google Play. Finally, I want to end today by congratulating Roger Kuzner for his nomination as the new Consul General of Canada in Boston. Everyone who knows Roger knows what a strong representative. I want to end today by congratulating Roger Kuzner for his nomination as the new Consul General of Canada in Boston. Everyone who knows Roger knows what a strong representative he is. I'm certain he will do a great job strengthening the important bond between Canada and New England and standing up for Canadian interests on the other side of the border. Merci tout le monde. I'm certain he will do a great job strengthening the important bond between Canada and New England and standing up for Canadian interests on the other side of the border. Merci tout le monde. Thank you, everyone. I will now hand over the floor to Minister Miller. Mark. Good morning. Bonjour. Sego. I will now hand over the floor to Minister Miller. Mark. Good morning, bonjour, Sego. As the pandemic continues, we continue to observe an increase in active COVID-19 cases across Canada. The most recent outbreaks are mainly linked continues. We continue to observe an increase in active COVID-19 cases across Canada. The most recent outbreaks are mainly linked to private and public gatherings where measures like physical distancing and mask wearing were not respected. For example, in 11 Indigenous communities to private and public gatherings where measures like physical distancing and mask wearing were not respected. For example, in 11 Indigenous communities in Saskatchewan, which are linked to one event only. We strongly encourage you to follow public health measures. These measures were put in place because they work, one, which are linked to one event only. We strongly encourage you to follow public health measures. These measures were put in place because they work. If each of us follows the measures adequately, together we will save lives. As of October 29th, we can confirm 348 active cases among the measures adequately. Together we will save lives. 
As of October 29th, we can confirm 348 active cases among First Nations living on a reserve for a total of 1,360 cases since the beginning of the pandemic. The peak was reached last week for a total of 1,360 cases since the beginning of the pandemic. The peak was reached last week. In Nunavik, there have been 28 positive cases confirmed since the beginning of the pandemic, and all are now recovered. This pandemic has been particularly hard on children and youth. We must ensure that... In Nunavik, there have been 28 positive cases confirmed since the beginning of the pandemic, and all are now recovered. This pandemic has been particularly hard on children and youth. We must ensure that they get the necessary support to be able to learn and to thrive in a safe environment. This is why we're announcing new funding for communities and organizations from early learning and child care to post necessary support to be able to learn and to thrive in a safe environment. This is why we're announcing new funding for communities and organizations from early learning and child care to post-secondary as they work to adjust to a new reality in the light of COVID-19. To the Indigenous post-secondary educations that spoke to me directly, you've been heard and we are acting. Just to a new reality in the light of COVID-19. To the Indigenous post-secondary educations that spoke to me directly, you've been heard and we are acting. With today's announcement, the Government of Canada will have committed close to $2.5 billion to directly support Indigenous communities and organizations during COVID-19. Committed close to $2.5 billion to directly support Indigenous communities and organizations during COVID-19. The pandemic has been difficult in many ways for Indigenous in children and youth. We must make sure everyone gets the support they need to succeed. The pandemic has been difficult in many ways for Indigenous in children and youth. We must make sure everyone gets the support they need to succeed. That's why today we are announcing additional funding to enable community and school infrastructures to adapt to this new reality. If I were not to mention the unacceptable situation in Niskandiga. Today we are announcing additional funding to enable community and school infrastructures to adapt to this new reality. If I were not to mention the unacceptable situation in Niskandiga. Our common priority, particularly during COVID, is the safety of all community members. My officials are working directly with the leadership of Niskandiga First Nation alongside common priority particularly during COVID, is the safety of all community members. My officials are working directly with the leadership of Niskandiga First Nation, alongside Grand Chief Alvin Fiddler of Nishinabeaski Nation and Madawa First Nations Management, as well as the province of Ontario, to ensure that community members have the supports they need and that appropriate Beaski Nation and Madawa First Nations Management, as well as the province of Ontario, to ensure that community members have the supports they need and that appropriate public health precautions are taken during this time at all times. We are working together to get the community members back home quickly and foremost safely. Public health precautions are taken during this time at all times. We are working together to get the community members back home quickly and foremost safely. The Canadian Rangers have also been deployed to support the community and should be on the ground as of today. We're diligently working towards finding immediate and long-term solutions to this health emergency, and we will not stop until Niskandiga has also been deployed to support the community and should be on the ground as of today. We're diligently working towards finding immediate and long-term solutions to this health emergency, and we will not stop until Niskandiga has access to clean, safe, and reliable drinking water. I'd like to remind everyone that we continue to work aggressively towards meeting the spring 2021 goal, even during the pandemic, and as I've stated, to safe and reliable drinking water. I'd like to remind everyone that we continue to work aggressively towards meeting the spring 2021 goal, even during the pandemic. And as I've stated to before, it's too early to determine the full impact of COVID-19 as we're in the middle of it on water infrastructure timelines. However, since March, we've lifted eight long-term boil advisories, for example, in Northwest and full impact of COVID-19 as we're in the middle of it on water infrastructure timelines. However, since March, we've lifted eight long-term boil advisories, for example, in Northwest Angle 37, that was under a boil advisory since 2002, and Grassy Narrows, who has been under a boil water advisory since 2014. We've also prevented, crucially, 17 short angle 37 
that was under a Boyle advisory since 2002, and Grassy Narrows, who has been under a Boyle water advisory since 2014. We've also prevented, crucially, 17 short-term Boyle water advisories from becoming long-term. Canada won't stop until all First Nations on reserve have access to safe, clean, and reliable drinking water. Miigwech, Nekomik, the water advisories from becoming long-term. Canada won't stop until all First Nations on reserve have access to safe, clean, and reliable drinking water. Miigwech, Nekomik, merci. Thank you, merci. Bonjour à toutes et à tous. Good day, everyone. Good day, everyone. Uh, we are providing an update on the national epidemiology and modeling work that informs the ongoing management. Good day, everyone. Good day, everyone. Uh, we are providing an update on the national epidemiology and modeling work that informs the ongoing management of COVID-19 in Canada. Canada has marked two tragic milestones since the last detailed epidemiological update. We have diagnosed over 200,000 cases of COVID-19 COVID in Canada. Canada has marked two tragic milestones since the last detailed epidemiological update. We have diagnosed over 200,000 cases of COVID-19 in Canada. And very sadly for all Canadians, we have lost more than 10,000 lives. Our sincere condolences go out to all who have lost loved ones throughout the corner. And very sadly for all Canadians, we have lost more than 10,000 lives. Our sincere condolences go out to all who have lost loved ones throughout the course of the pandemic. In the following presentation, we'll have a closer look at the regional and demographic epidemiology of COVID-19 in Canada and discuss how that impacts the national. In the following presentation, we'll have a closer look at the regional and demographic epidemiology of COVID-19 in Canada and discuss how that impacts the national pandemic picture. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Good day, everyone. Today we'll provide an update on the national epidemiology and modeling. Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Good day, everyone. Today we'll provide an update on the national epidemiology and modeling work that informs the ongoing management of COVID-19 in Canada. Canada has marked two tragic milestones since the last detailed epidemiological update work that informs the ongoing management of COVID-19 in Canada. Canada has marked two tragic milestones since the last detailed epidemiological update. We we have diagnosed over 200,000 cases of COVID-19 in Canada. And very sadly for all Canadians, we have lost more than 10,000. We have diagnosed over 200,000 cases of COVID-19 in Canada. And very sadly for all Canadians, we have lost more than 10,000 lives. Our sincere condolences go out to all who have lost loved ones throughout the course of the pandemic. In the following presentation, we'll have our sincere condolences go out to all who have lost loved ones throughout the course of the pandemic. In the following presentation, we'll have a closer look at the regional and demographic epidemiology of COVID-19 in Canada and discuss how that impacts the national pandemic picture. And demographic epidemiology of COVID-19 in Canada and discuss how that impacts the national pandemic picture. Slide two. The number of cases reported nationally remains above peak levels seen during the first wave, with an average of close to 2,800 cases. Slide two. The number of cases reported nationally remains above peak levels seen during the first wave, with an average of close to 2,800 cases reported daily over the last week. Quebec and Ontario case numbers significantly impact the national curve, accounting for over 75% of all cases reported daily over the last week. Quebec and Ontario case numbers significantly impact the national curve, accounting for over 75% of all cases reported since the beginning of the pandemic and continuing to account for the majority of cases. The positive do. Slide two. The number of 
and continuing to account for the majority of cases. Slide 2. The number of cases reported nationally remains above peak levels seen during the first wave, with an average of close to 2,800 cases reported daily over the last week, above peak levels seen during the first wave, with an average of close to 2,800 cases reported daily over the last week. Quebec and Ontario case numbers significantly impact the national curve, accounting for over 75% of all cases reported since the beginning of the pandemic. Quebec and Ontario case numbers significantly impact the national curve, accounting for over 75% of all cases reported since the beginning of the pandemic, and continuing to account for the majority of cases. Canada's pandemic experience is characterized by regional epidemics that vary considerably across the country. Continuing to account for the majority of cases. Canada's pandemic experience is characterized by regional epidemics that vary considerably across the country. The growth in Quebec case counts has appeared to gradually stabilize, but still averaging around 1,000 cases daily during recent weeks. That growth in Quebec case counts has appeared to gradually stabilize, but still averaging around 1,000 cases daily during recent weeks. At the same time, over the past two weeks, British Columbia, the Prairie Provinces, and Ontario have all marked their highest daily case counts since the beginning of the pandemic. British Columbia, the Prairie Provinces, and Ontario have all marked their highest daily case counts since the beginning of the pandemic. We have seen some clusters of cases within the, within the Atlantic bubble, notably with New Brunswick implementing stronger regional public health measures to limit further spread. And in the, we have seen some clusters of cases within the, within the Atlantic bubble, notably with New Brunswick implementing stronger regional public health measures to limit further spread. And in the territories, while a few travel-related cases have been identified recently, and one cluster is currently under investigation in the Yukon, there has been no widespread community transfer. While a few travel-related cases have been identified recently, and one cluster is currently under investigation in the Yukon, there has been no widespread community transmission. Yeah, positive three. Slide three. Canada's pandemic experience is characterized by regional COVID-19. Yeah, positive three. Slide 3. Canada's pandemic experience is characterized by regional COVID-19 epidemics that vary considerably across the country. The growth in Quebec case counts has appeared to gradually stabilize, averaging around wonderably across the country. The growth in Quebec case counts has appeared to gradually stabilize, averaging around 1,000 cases daily during recent weeks. At the same time, over the past two weeks, British Columbia, the Prairie Provinces, and Ontario have all marked their 1,000 cases daily during recent weeks. At the same time, over the past two weeks, British Columbia, the Prairie Provinces, and Ontario have all marked their highest daily case counts since the beginning of the pandemic. We have seen some clusters of cases within the Atlantic bubble, particularly with New Brunswick daily case counts since the beginning of the pandemic. We have seen some clusters of cases within the Atlantic bubble, particularly with New Brunswick implementing stronger regional public health measures to limit further spread. And in the territories, while a few travel-related cases, stronger regional public health measures to limit further spread. And in the territories, while a few travel-related cases have been identified recently and one cluster is currently under investigation in the Yukon, there has been no widespread community transmission of COVID-19. And one cluster is currently under investigation in the Yukon, there has been no widespread community community transmission of COVID-19. Slide four. The time-varying effective reproduction number, or the RT, represents how many people are being infected by each new case. When each new case infects... Slide four. 
The time varying effective reproduction number, or the RT, represents how many people are being infected by each new case. When each new case infects less than one person, the epidemic will die out. Canada's RT has been greater than one since the end of August, meaning that every 100 cases in Canada passes the virus one person, the epidemic will die out. Canada's RT has been greater than one since the end of August, meaning that every 100 cases in Canada passes the virus to more than 100 others and so on, with each new generation of spread getting larger. We need to limit our contacts and opportunities for the virus to spread to bring the RT consistent and so on, with each new generation of spread getting larger. We need to limit our contacts and opportunities for the virus to spread to bring the RT consistently below one. Dear positive cat. Slide four. The time varying effective reproduction number, also known as R. Dear positive cat. Slide four. The time varying effective reproduction number, also known as RT, represents how many people are being infected by each new case. When each new case infects less than one person, the epidemic will die out. Canada T represents how many people are being infected by each new case. When each new case infects less than one person, the epidemic will die out. Canada's RT has been greater than one since the end of August, meaning that every 100 cases in Canada passes the virus on to more than 100 others and so on has been greater than one since the end of August, meaning that every 100 cases in Canada passes the virus on to more than 100 others and so on with each new generation of spread getting larger. We need to limit our contacts and limit opportunities for the virus to spread, a generation of spread getting larger. We need to limit our contacts and limit opportunities for the virus to spread in order to bring the RT consistently below one. Slide five. Another important indicator for Canadians relate to consistently below one. Slide five. Another important indicator for Canadians relate to testing. Both the number of people tested, as well as the percent of tests that come back positive, which indicates how much this virus is spreading. As you can see, lab to testing. Both the number of people tested, as well as the percent of tests that come back positive, which indicates how much this virus is spreading. As you can see, labs across Canada are testing at a high rate with about 75,000 persons being tested daily. However, worryingly, we are seeing that the percentage of people testing that are testing at a high rate with about 75,000 persons being tested daily. However, worryingly, we are seeing that the percentage of people testing positive is continuing to rise across the country. Currently, the average percent positivity is approaching 4% nationally and there have been some concerning spikes in testing to rise across the country. Currently, the average percent positivity is approaching 4% nationally, and there have been some concerning spikes in test positivity in some provinces recently. Dear Positive saying. Slide five. Another important indicator for Canadians relates to recently. Dear Positive saying. Slide five. Another important indicator for Canadians relates to testing. Both the number of people tested and the percent of tests that come back positive, which indicate how much the virus is spreading. As you can see, labs across Canada are testing. Both the number of people tested and the percent of tests that come back positive, which indicate how much the virus is spreading. As you can see, labs across Canada are testing at a high rate, with about 75,000 Canadians being tested daily. However, we're testing at a high rate, with about 75,000 Canadians being tested daily. However, worryingly, we are seeing that the percentage of people testing positive is continuing to rise across the country, 
Currently, the average percent positivity, we are seeing that the percentage of people testing positive is continuing to rise across the country. Currently, the average percent positivity is approaching 4% nationally, and there have been some concerning spikes in test positivity in some provinces recently. This map shows health region nationally, and there have been some concerning spikes in test positivity in some provinces recently. This map shows health regions with the highest 14-day incidence rates of COVID-19 in the deeper shades of blue. On October the 9th, the date of the last modeling update, 19 regions with the highest 14-day incidence rates of COVID-19 in the deeper shades of blue. On October the 9th, the date of the last modeling update, 19 health regions were reporting more than 50 cases per 100,000 people, while three weeks later, this has almost doubled to 34 health regions. As well, the number of regions were reporting more than 50 cases per 100,000 people, while three weeks later, this has almost doubled to 34 health regions. As well, the number of active cases continues to rise in First Nations communities, with 26 Indigenous communities now reporting two or more active cases. Dear Positive Sid, to rise in First Nations communities, with 26 indigenous communities now reporting two or more active cases. Dear Positive Sis. Slide six. This map shows health regions with the highest 14-day incidence rates of COVID-19 in deeper shades of map. Shows health regions with the highest 14-day incidence rates of COVID-19 in deeper shades of blue. On October 9th, which was the date of the last modeling update, 19 health regions were reporting more than 50 blue. On October 9th, which was the date of the last modeling update, 19 health regions were reporting more than 50 cases per 100,000 people. Three weeks later, this has almost doubled to 34 health regions as per 100,000 people. Three weeks later, this has almost doubled to 34 health regions. As well, the number of active cases continues to rise in First Nations communities, with 26 Indigenous communities now reporting two or more active cases. Slide. of cases continues to rise in First Nations communities, with 26 Indigenous communities now reporting two or more active cases. Slide 7. While we have consistently observed the highest incidence of COVID-19 among young adults aged 20 to 39 years, we're now seeing a concerning rise in the observed the highest incidence of COVID-19 among young adults aged 20 to 39 years, we're now seeing a concerning rise in the incidence among ad individuals 80 years of age and older, which is the age group at highest risk for severe illness and death. Increasing incidence in those under 20 incidents among ad individuals 80 years of age and older, which is the age group at highest risk for severe illness and death. Increasing incidence in those under 20 years of age reflects participation of children and youth in school, daycare, and college. In the almost two months since most schools opened in Canada, approximately 2,000 reflects participation of children and youth in school, daycare, and college. In the almost two months since most schools opened in Canada, approximately 2,100 have reported at least one confirmed case, and over 50 schools have reported five or more cases. This includes some examples of spread occurring in a school environment at least one confirmed case, and over 50 schools have reported five or more cases. This includes some examples of spread occurring in a school environment. Slide 7. While we have consistently observed the highest incidence of COVID-19 infections among young adults, slide 7. While we have consistently observed the highest incidence of COVID-19 infections among young adults aged 20 to 39 years, we are now seeing a concerning rise in the incidence among individuals 80 years of age and older 
which is the age group at highest risk, aged 20 to 39 years, we are now seeing a concerning rise in the incidence among individuals 80 years of age and older, which is the age group at highest risk for severe illness and death. Increasing incidence in those under 20 years of age reflects participation of children and youth in school, daycare, and college illness and death. Increasing incidence in those under 20 years of age reflects participation of children and youth in school, daycare, and college. In the almost two months since most schools opened in Canada, approximately 2,100 have reported at least one two months since most schools opens in, opened in Canada, approximately 2,100 have reported at least one confirmed case, and over 50 schools have reported five or more cases. This includes some examples of spread occurring in a school environment. In this map of Toronto, schools have reported five or more cases. This includes some examples of spread occurring in a school environment. In this map of Toronto, we can see that COVID-19 infection rates differ across neighbourhoods, falling along the same lines as existing health inequities in the city. Factors such as gen Toronto, we can see that COVID-19 infection rates differ across neighbourhoods, falling along the same lines as existing health inequities in the city. Factors such as gender, income, and race have influenced people's risks of being infected and becoming severely ill and resulted in disproportionate impacts on seniors. People living with them and race have influenced people's risks of being infected and becoming severely ill and resulted in disproportionate impacts on seniors, people living with disabilities, women, essential workers, and racialized populations. This is a Canada-wide issue. A Statistics Canada report re released this week indicates essential workers and racialized populations. This is a Canada-wide issue. A Statistics Canada report re released this week indicates that COVID-19 mortality rates are higher in neighborhoods with a higher proportion of visible minorities. We need to continue to come together to address, build resilience, and eliminate care in neighborhoods with a higher proportion of visible minorities. We need to continue to come together to address, build resilience, and eliminate health inequities that put Canadians at greater risk of COVID-19 and other health threats. Dear positive with Slide 8. In this map of Toronto, health inequities that put Canadians at greater risk of COVID-19 and other health threats. Dear positive with Slide 8. In this map of Toronto, we can see that COVID-19 infection rates differ across neighbourhoods, falling along the same lines as existing health inequities in the city. We can see that COVID-19 infection rates differ across neighbourhoods, falling along the same lines as existing health inequities in the city. Factors such as gender, income, and race have influenced people's risk of being infected and becoming severely ill, and resulted in disproportionate such as gender, income, and race have influenced people's risk of being infected and becoming severely ill, and resulted in disproportionate impacts on seniors, people living with disabilities, women, essential workers and racialized populations. This is a people living with disabilities, women, essential workers, and racialized populations. This is a Canada-wide issue. A Statistics Canada report released this week indicates that COVID-19 mortality rates are higher in neighborhoods Canada-wide issue. A Statistics Canada report released this week indicates that COVID-19 mortality rates are higher in neighborhoods with a higher proportion of visible minorities. We need to continue to come together to build resilience and eliminate health inequities proportion of visible minorities. We need to continue to come together to build resilience and eliminate health inequities that put Canadians at greater risk of COVID-19 and other health threats. Slide 9. 
the pattern of outbreaks has been shifting during the course of the pandemic. Greater risk of COVID-19 and other health threats. Slide nine. The pattern of outbreaks has been shifting during the course of the pandemic. Of great concern are ongoing outbreaks in long-term care facilities, where we must continue to strengthen measures to prevent introductions and control spread through rapid detection and growing outbreaks in long-term care facilities, where we must continue to strengthen measures to prevent introductions and control spread through rapid detection and robust infection prevention control. At the same time, an increasing number of outbreaks are being linked to private social gatherings, such as weddings, funerals, and informal fam robust infection prevention control. At the same time, an increasing number of outbreaks are being linked to private social gatherings, such as weddings, funerals, and informal family or community celebrations, which several jurisdictions noted are contributing significantly to the spread of COVID-19. Some of these events are considered super spreadity celebrations, which several jurisdictions noted are contributing significantly to the spread of COVID-19. Some of these events are considered super spreader events, when a single event results in a large number of cases. With large numbers of contacts involved, these put significant strain on public health capacity to interrupt when a single event results in a large number of cases. Which large numbers of contacts involved, these put significant strain on public health capacity to interrupt transmission through testing and tracing. Dear positive news. Slide nine. The pattern of outbreaks has been shifting during the. Dear positive news. Slide nine. The pattern of outbreaks has been shifting during the course of the pandemic. Of great concern are ongoing outbreaks in long-term care facilities, where we must continue to strengthen measures to prevent introductions and control spread during the course of the pandemic. Of great concern are ongoing outbreaks in long-term care facilities, where we must continue to strengthen measures to prevent introductions and control spread through rapid detection and robust infection prevention and control. At the same time, an increasing number of outbreaks are being outbreaks through rapid detection and robust infection prevention and control. At the same time, an increasing number of outbreaks are being outbreaks rather are being linked to private social gatherings such as weddings, funerals, and informal family or community celebrations, which several jurisdictions note are contributing private social gatherings such as weddings, funerals, and informal family or community celebrations, which several jurisdictions note are contributing significantly to the spread of COVID-19. Some of these events are considered super spreader events to the spread of COVID-19. Some of these events are considered super spreader events when a single event results in a large number of cases. With large numbers of contacts involved, these put significant strain on public health capacity when a single event results in a large number of cases. With large numbers of contacts involved, these put significant strain on public health capacity to interrupt transmission through testing and tracing. Slide 10. Currently, the daily number of COVID-19 cases in to interrupt transmission through testing and tracing. Slide 10. Currently, the daily number of COVID-19 cases in hospital remains lower than the peak of over 3,000 cases a day observed during the initial wave. This may be due in part to the younger age of cases in recent months than the peak of over 3,000 cases a day observed during the initial wave. This may be due in part to the younger age of cases in recent months, together with better treatment options. However, this situation can change and depends on the vulnerability of populations impacted and the capacity of the healthcare system. In However, this situation can change and depends on the vulnerability of populations impacted and the capacity of the healthcare system in affected areas. For the past several weeks, we have been observing an increase in overall hospitalizations nationally. 
based on the last seven days, an average of open affected areas. For the past several weeks, we have been observing an increase in overall hospitalizations nationally. Based on the last seven days, an average of over 1,100 people with COVID-19 were being treated in Canadian hospitals on any given day, including over 200 of whom are being treated in intensive. 1,100 people with COVID-19 were being treated in Canadian hospitals on any given day, including over 200 of whom are being treated in intensive care units. Dear positive this. Slide 10. Currently, the daily number of COVID-19 cases in hospital remains lower. Dear positive this. Slide 10. Currently, the daily number of COVID-19 cases in hospital remains lower than the peak of over 3,000 cases a day, which was observed during the initial wave. This may be due in part to the younger age of cases in a day, which was observed during the initial wave. This may be due in part to the younger age of cases in recent months, together with better treatment options. However, we know the situation can change, and it depends on the vulnerability of populations in recent months, together with better treatment options. However, we know the situation can change, and it depends on the vulnerability of populations impacted and on the capacity of healthcare systems in affected areas. For the past several weeks, we have been observing an increase in overall hospitalization and on the capacity of healthcare systems in affected areas. For the past several weeks, we have been observing an increase in overall hospitalizations nationally. Based on the last seven days, an average of over 1,100 people with COVID-19 were being treated in Canadian hospitals on it. Based on the last seven days, an average of over 1,100 people with COVID-19 were being treated in Canadian hospitals on any given day, and this includes over 200 being treated in intensive care units. With hospitalizations, Deaths are also late indicators of COVID-19 severity. Includes over 200 being treated in intensive care units. With hospitalizations, deaths are also late indicators of COVID-19 severity and can lag behind increases in reported cases by several weeks, owing to the prolonged natural history of the disease. Over the past week, an average of 30 deaths severity and can lag behind increases in reported cases by several weeks owing to the prolonged natural history of the disease. Over the past week, an average of 30 deaths per day have been reported, marking a gradual but steady increase since August. From July to present, the average age of death for people dying due to COVID-19-related illness have been reported, marking a gradual but steady increase since August. From July to present, the average age of death for people dying due to COVID-19-related illness is 84 years in Canada, but ranges from 19 years to 107. Dear positive owns. Slide 11. Years in Canada, but ranges from 19 years to 107. Dear positive owns. Slide 11. As with hospitalizations, deaths are also late indicators of COVID-19 severity and can lag behind increases in reported cases by several. Deaths are also late indicators of COVID-19 severity and can lag behind increases in reported cases by several weeks. This is owing to the prolonged natural history of the disease. Over the past week, an average of 30 deaths per day have been reported for weeks. This is owing to the prolonged natural history of the disease. Over the past week, an average of 30 deaths per day have been reported, marking a gradual but steady increase since August. From July to present, the average age of death for people dying due to COVID gradual but steady increase since August. From July to present, the average age of death for people dying due to COVID-19 related illnesses in Canada is 84 years.
Based on Canadian data up to October the 24th, short-term forecasting shows the predicted case in Canada is 84 well. years. Based on Canadian data up to October the 24th, short-term forecasting shows the predicted cases and deaths due to COVID-19 out to November the 8th. The graph on the left shows the predicted number of cases could be in the range of 251,800 to November the 8th. The graph on the left shows the predicted number of cases could be in the range of 251,800 to 262,000 by November the 8th. The graph on the right shows the predicted number of deaths could be in the range of 10,285 to 262,000 by November the 8th. The graph on the right shows the predicted number of deaths could be in the range of 10,285 to 10,400 by November the 8th. Dear positive news. Slide 12. Based on Canadian data, up to 400 by November the 8th. Dear positive news. Slide 12. Based on Canadian data, up to October 24th, short-term forecasting shows the predicted cases and deaths due to COVID-19 out to November 8th. The graph on the left so short-term forecasting shows the predicted cases and deaths due to COVID-19 out to November 8th. The graph on the left shows the predicted number of cases could be in the range of 251,800 to 262,000. Could be in the range of 251,800 to 262,000 by November 8th. The graph on the right shows the predicted number of deaths could be in the range of 10,285 to 10,400. Slide 13. By November 8th. The graph on the right shows the predicted number of deaths could be in the range of 10,285 to 10,400. Slide 13. This graph shows how the epidemic may evolve in Canada over the next month. The key message is that if we increase or if we even maintain our current rate of contact with others. The graph shows how the epidemic may evolve in Canada over the next month. The key message is that if we increase, or if we even maintain our current rate of contact with others, the epidemic in Canada is forecasted to continue increasing steeply. To bend the epidemic curve and reduce transmission to lower levels, as illustrated by the blue line, is forecasted to continue increasing steeply. To bend the epidemic curve and reduce transmission to lower levels, as illustrated by the blue line, we must really reduce our number of contacts as much as possible. We can reduce our rate of contact with other people through a combination of individual practices and population-based measures it's as much as possible. We can reduce our rate of contact with other people through a combination of individual practices and population-based measures. Individual practices include limiting our everyday contacts to as few people as possible, given personal, family, and essential responsibilities. Strictly and consistently maintaining physical individual practices include limiting our everyday contacts to as few people as possible, given personal, family, and essential responsibilities. Strictly and consistently maintaining physical distancing and good hygiene practices. But where infection rates are high, and health and other social and economic systems are being stretched, population-based public health measuring and good hygiene practices. But where infection rates are high and health and other social and economic systems are being stretched, population-based public health measures like restrictions and closures may be needed for a time to decrease contact rates community-wide and slow the spread where the virus is surging. Closures may be needed for a time to decrease contact rates community-wide and slow the spread where the virus is surging. Dear positive Slide 13. This graph shows how the epidemic may evolve in Canada over the next month. The key message, team. this graph shows how the epidemic may evolve in Canada over the next month. 
The key message is that if we increase or even if we maintain our current rate of contact with others, the epidemic in Canada is forecast to continue increasing steeply. It is that if we increase or even if we maintain our current rate of contact with others, the epidemic in Canada is forecast to continue increasing steeply. To bend the epidemic curve and reduce transmission to lower levels, as illustrated by the blue line, we must really reduce our number of contacts as much as possible. Bend the epidemic curve and reduce transmission to lower levels, as illustrated by the blue line, we must really reduce our number of contacts as much as possible. We can reduce our rate of contact with other people through a combination of individual practices and population-based measures. Individual practice our rate of contact with other people through a combination of individual practices and population-based measures. Individual practices include limiting our everyday contact to as few people as possible, taking into account personal, family, and essential responsibilities contact to as few people as possible, taking into account personal, family, and essential responsibilities. Strictly and consistently maintaining physical distancing and good hygiene practices. But where infection rates are strictly and consistently maintaining physical distancing and good hygiene practices. But where infection rates are high and health and other social and economic systems are being stretched, population-based public health measures, such as restrictions, and, and health and other social and economic systems are being stretched. Population-based public health measures, such as restrictions and closures, may be needed for a time in order to decrease contact rates community-wide and slow the spread where the virus is surging for a time in order to decrease contact rates community-wide and slow the spread where the virus is surging. Slide 14. Managing COVID-19 is a whole-of-Canada team effort. We've said many times that public health cannot do team. Managing COVID-19 is a whole of Canada team effort. We've said many times that public health cannot do this alone. After Canadians worked with public health to hammer the COVID-19 curve in the spring, we had our first dance over the summer. We held our lead on COVID-19 this alone. After Canadians worked with public health to hammer the COVID-19 curve in the spring, we had our first dance over the summer. We held our lead on COVID-19 for some time, but since resuming more activities over the summer and perhaps slipping on a few of our key dance steps, consistent physical distancing, exemplary hygiene and mind, but since resuming more activities over the summer and perhaps slipping on a few of our key dance steps, consistent physical distancing, exemplary hygiene and mask wearing, some of us have lost our lead. But I know Canadians can dance and take back the lead again. To do this, we need to reduce contacts to the best of our ability while people have lost our lead. But I know Canadians can dance and take back the lead again. To do this, we need to reduce contacts to the best of our ability while performing those other key steps with precision. No cutting corners or skipping essential distancing steps. This virus will cut in anywhere and at any time we let it. So let's get in nor cutting corners or skipping essential distancing steps. This virus will cut in anywhere and at any time we let it. So let's get back in the dance and take the lead. What comes next for us this fall and winter is for every one of us to determine through our decisions and our actions, letting down our guard back in the dance and take the lead. What comes next for us this fall and winter is for every one of us to determine through our decisions and our actions letting down our guard and letting this virus win is not an option. Let's bring COVID-19 down together. Dear positive Slide 14. This virus win is not an option. Let's bring COVID-19 down together. 
Yeah, positive cat dogs. Slide 14. Managing COVID-19 is a whole-of-Canada team effort. We have said many times that public health cannot do this alone. Team is a whole-of-Canada team effort. We have said many times that public health cannot do this alone. After Canadians worked with public health to hammer the COVID-19 curve in the spring, we then had our first dance over the summer. To hammer the COVID-19 curve in the spring, we then had our first dance over the summer. We held our lead on COVID-19 for some time, but since resuming more activities over the summer and perhaps slipping on a few of our... We held our lead on COVID-19 for some time, but since resuming more activities over the summer and perhaps slipping on a few of our key dance steps, such as consistent physical distancing, exemplary hygiene, and mask wearing, some of us have lost our lead. Steps, such as consistent physical distancing, exemplary hygiene, and mask wearing, some of us have lost our lead. This will not do, and I know that Canadians can dance and can take back the lead again. To do this, we need to reduce contacts to the best of our ability, and I know that Canadians can dance and can take back the lead again. To do this, we need to reduce contacts to the best of our ability while performing those other key steps with precision. No cutting corners or skipping essential distancing steps. This virus will cut in those other key steps with precision. No cutting corners or skipping essential distancing steps. This virus will cut in anywhere and any time we let it. So, let's get back in the dance and take the lead. What, come ne what comes next for us this anywhere and any time we let it. So, let's get back in the dance and take the lead. What, come ne what comes next for us this fall and winter is for every one of us to determine through our decisions and our actions. Letting down our guard and letting this virus win is not an option. Is for every one of us to determine through our decisions and our actions. Letting down our guard and letting this virus win is not an option. Let's bring COVID-19 down together. Thank you, doctors, for this presentation. The Prime Minister will be available for 20 minutes for the question period, and Ministers Usain, Minister Miller, and doctors will remain down together. Thank you, doctors, for this presentation. The Prime Minister will be available for 20 minutes for the question period, and Ministers Usain, Minister Miller, and doctors will remain available for more questions afterwards. Starting with the phone today, Operator, c'est à vous. Thank you, merci. Please press star one. If you have a question, s'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile one. With the phone today, Operator, c'est à vous. Thank you, merci. Please press star one. If you have a question, s'il vous plaît, appuyez sur étoile 1 si vous avez une question. Première question, Lina Dib, la presse canadienne. First question from Lina Dib oui, from the Canadian uh, Press. Trudeau, Hello, Mr. Trudeau. I would like to... Si vous avez une question. Première question, Lina Dib, la presse canadienne. First question from Lina Dib oui, from the Canadian uh, Press. Trudeau, Hello, Mr. Trudeau. I would like to speak to you about something completely different. Yesterday, we asked you a question very clearly and you did not answer. Some say that it should. Yesterday we asked you a question very clearly and you did not answer. Some say that it should be allowed to make fun of religion and to make characters of the Prophet Muhammad. And so I would like to ask you what you specifically think about that. Should it be allowed religion and to make characters of the Prophet Muhammad? And so I would like to ask you what you specifically think about that. Should it be allowed to make fun of religion and Muslim leaders? Thank you, Lina. First of all, we will always defend to make fun of religion and 
Muslim leaders. Thank you, Lina. First of all, we will always defend freedom of speech. It's enshrined in our Charter of for Freedoms, and it is an essential part of every free society. We will always defend freedom of speech. It's enshrined in our Charter of for Freedoms, and it is an essential part of every free society. We will always defend it. But freedom of expression is not unlimited. For example, it's not allowed to cry fire. Of expression is not unlimited. For example, it's not allowed to cry fire in a packed cinema. In a respectful society such as ours, everyone must be aware in a respectful society such as ours, everyone must be aware of the impact of our words and actions on others. There are communities experiencing of the impact of our words and actions on others. There are communities experiencing huge discrimination in Canada today. So yes, we will always defend freedom of expression, huge discrimination in Canada today. So yes, we will always defend freedom of expression, but everyone must act respectfully towards others and not try to needlessly or arbitrarily hurt someone. Act respectfully towards others and not try to needlessly or arbitrarily hurt someone who we share this planet and society with. Follow-up question. So if I understand, you do not think that people should make fun of religion or with. Follow-up question. So if I understand, you do not think that people should make fun of religion or religious figures. That's what I understood when you gave your example of the packed cinema. Terrorists are using this as just like our religious figures. That's what I understood when you gave your example of the packed cinema. Terrorists are using this as justification for violence. Answer, I believe that in a society such as ours, we should always strive to be respectful for violence. Answer, I believe that in a society such as ours, we should always strive to be respectful and not to insult anyone else. We are all sharing this society. It's a matter of respect. It's a matter of one else. We are all sharing this society. It's a matter of respect. It's a matter of not trying to dehumanize or deliberately hurt someone else. I think this is an extremely important debate to have, nice, or deliberately hurt someone else. I think this is an extremely important debate to have regarding, for example, possible exceptions. But often, the intention is less important because the act regarding, for example, possible exceptions, but often, the intention is less important because the action is still hurtful. So, our society is based on respecting others and listening and learning, so we should have this hurtful. So, our society is based on respecting others and listening and learning, so we should have this discussion in a respectful way. But I'll repeat what I said yesterday. There's absolutely nothing that could ever justify 
way. But I'll repeat what I said yesterday. There's absolutely nothing that could ever justify the terrorist acts which were absolutely appalling that we saw in France and that we see elsewhere in the world. It is which were absolutely appalling that we saw in France and that we see elsewhere in the world. It is unjustifiable, and Canada wholeheartedly denounces those acts, standing in solidarity with our allies such as France. France is going through unjustifiable, and Canada wholeheartedly denounces those acts, standing in solidarity with our allies such as France. France is going through an extremely difficult time. At the same time, we must keep in mind that these murderers, these terrorists, these criminals do not in extremely difficult time. At the same time, we must keep in mind that these murderers, these terrorists, these criminals do not in any way represent a religion. They do not in any way represent Muslims in Canada or anywhere else in the world and a religion. They do not in any way represent Muslims in Canada or anywhere else in the world. And we must not allow them to represent that religion. Merci. Operator, prochaine question téléphone. Next telephone question. To represent that religion. Merci. Operator, prochaine question téléphone. Thank Next telephone question. question. Justin Ling, freelance. Line open. Hey, good morning, Prime Minister. Um, as we know from uh, Dr. Tam's report yesterday, the country is actually seeing two different. Justin Ling, freelance. Line open. Hey, good morning, Prime Minister. Um, as we know from uh, Dr. Tam's report yesterday, the country is actually seeing two different pandemics at the same time. We're seeing a huge spike in opioid overdose cases. Um, as much as doubling in some cases, it may be the deadliest year on record. Given that, at the same time, we're seeing a huge spike in opioid overdose cases, um, as much as doubling in some cases, it may be the deadliest year on record. Given that, why haven't we seen the sort of drastic action uh, taken to uh, get those cases down that we've seen uh, your government take in other regimes? The sort of drastic action uh, taken to uh, get those cases down that we've seen uh, your government take in other respects? Uh, we have moved forward on strong action to fight the opioid epidemic, uh, uh, not just this year, but over the past years. Uh, greater access to safe consumption forward on strong action to fight the opioid epidemic, uh, uh, not just this year, but over the past years. Uh, greater access to safe consumption programs and sites, greater access to life-saving medications from naloxone, uh, naloxone as, a, as a first responder's uh, response to uh, prescription programs and sites, greater access to life-saving medications from naloxone, uh, naloxone as, a, as a first responder's uh, response to uh, prescription uh, alternatives uh, to help people with uh, who are struggling with addictions. We've continued to invest in frontline workers. We've continued to make investments uh, in uh, health supports, part of this uh, to help people with who are struggling with addictions. We've continued to invest in frontline workers. We've continued to make investments uh, in uh, health supports. Part of the $19 billion we transferred over the summer to the provinces for the safe restart included money directly uh, for uh, fighting the opioid epidemic. The billion dollars we transferred over the summer to the provinces for the safe restart included money directly uh, for uh, fighting the opioid epidemic. We will continue uh, to work uh, with provinces, with frontline workers, with municipalities right across the country who are dealing uh, with uh, this crisis at the same time as we were dealing uh, with provinces, with frontline workers, with municipalities right across the country who are dealing uh, with uh, this crisis at the same time as we were dealing with uh, the larger crisis of COVID-19. Following up, Mr. Ling. Evidently, the actions your government has taken dealing with uh, the 
the larger crisis of COVID-19. Following up, Mr. Ling. Evidently, the actions your government has taken haven't been enough. I mean, deaths are continuing to increase. Uh, just last month in British Columbia, it's been one of the deadliest on record. Uh, deaths specifically for Indigenous people have doubled. I mean, deaths are continuing to increase. Uh, just last month in British Columbia, it's been one of the deadliest on record. Uh, deaths specifically for Indigenous people have doubled in some communities. Uh, Dr. Tam, as well as six other chief medical and public health officers from across the country, have said decriminalization needs to be on the table. If not, Tam, as well as six other chief medical and public health officers from across the country, have said decriminalization needs to be on the table. If not, an immediate priority. So, you know, why are you not listening to Dr. Tam? And maybe Dr. Tam can even jump in and offer some advice as, as to what the government ought to be doing an immediate priority. So, you know, why are you not listening to Dr. Tam? And maybe Dr. Tam can even jump in and offer some advice as, as to what the government ought to be doing. We know that there is no one solution to stopping uh, and uh, stopping the opioid epidemic and uh, saving lives of far too many people from all back. There is no one solution to stopping uh, and uh, stopping the opioid epidemic and uh, saving lives of far too many people from all backgrounds in all corners of the country who are affected. But of course, as is the case with so many crises and pandemics, uh, the most vulnerable and the uh, uh, the marginalized are all country who are affected. But of course, as is the case with so many crises and pandemics, uh, the most vulnerable and the, uh, uh, the marginalized are all too often greater affected. Uh, we are looking at a broad range of actions. Uh, as I've said, we've uh, moved forward on increasing the access to uh, prescription. We are looking at a broad range of actions. Uh, as I've said, we've uh, moved forward on increasing the access to uh, prescription medications and alternatives to opioids. We've moved forward on safe consumption sites. We've moved forward on significant public health efforts, and we will still and continue to listen to the medications and alternatives to opioids. We've moved forward on safe consumption sites. We've moved forward on significant public health efforts. And we will still and continue to listen to the best advice of experts and public health officials as we look for uh, other steps we can take as we continue to fight that epidemic as well. Thank you, operator. Last question on the phone. Place of experts and public health officials as we look for uh, other steps we can take as we continue to fight that epidemic as well. Thank you, operator. Last question on the phone. Thank you, merci. Next question, Sharon Kirky, National Post. Line open. Oh, hi. Thanks for taking my call. It's for Dr. Tam. Dr. Tam, the model say. Thank you, merci. Next question, Sharon Kirky, National Post. Line open. Oh, hi. Thanks for taking my call. It's for Dr. Tam. Dr. Tam, the models say that if we decrease our rate of contacts by 25 percent, the epidemic is forecast to come under control. What does that mean? What does that mean, though? Can you help people with some predictive contacts by 25 percent? The epidemic is forecast to come under control. What does that mean? What does that mean, though? Can you help people with some practical examples here? But, you know, I mean, does that mean I go to the grocery store one day a one day fewer a week, you know, I eliminate one person from my bubble. What, what does that mean? Pa practical examples here? But, you know, I mean, does that mean I go to the grocery store one day, a, one day fewer a week, uh, you know, I eliminate one person from my bubble? What, what does that mean? Well, I think it's back to the core habits that I uh, be, have been promoting. So keep as much to your household um, um, bubble, if you like, as much as possible. Well, I think it's back to the core habits that I uh, be, have been promoting. So keep as much to your household um, um, bubble, if you like, as much as possible. Um, and uh, take all the necessary precautions if you have to do grocery shopping, or if you have to pick up food or that type of thing. So it is back down to the end. Uh, take all the necessary precautions if you have to do grocery shopping, or if you have to pick up food or that type of thing. So it is back down to those uh, recurring mes messages that we, we provided. Now, the 25% in the modeling scenario uh, includes not just the personal measures, but also what your community that we, we've provided. 
Now, the 25% in the modeling scenario uh, includes not just the personal measures, but also what your community might be doing to reduce uh, contacts, which sometimes necessarily uh, has been um, sort of uh, implemented in hotspots, for example, the community might be doing to reduce uh, contacts, which sometimes necessarily uh, has been um, sort of uh, implemented in hotspots, for example, does include restriction in certain settings. So it's a combination of those. But for individuals, I think on a practical basis is to keep to your restriction in certain settings. So it's a combination of those. But for individuals, I think on a practical basis is to keep to your family or household as much as possible um, in order, for example, for schools, for other essential businesses, workplaces to uh, be maintained as possible. Um, in order, for example, for schools, for other essential businesses, workplaces to uh, be maintained. And so that's the um, general advice. Um, there's no sort of mathematical formula in terms of the exact numbers of contacts but it is to trump general advice. Um, there's no sort of mathematical formula in terms of the exact numbers of contacts, but it is to try and keep that as, as low as possible. Uh, it also depends on your own um, risk situations, whether you have underlying risk factors, uh, whether there's someone in your household that has, uh, and keep that as, as low as possible. Uh, it also depends on your own um, risk situations, whether you have underlying risk factors, uh, whether there's someone in your household that has uh, risk factors. So um, it is actually something that we, we should all try and do is to develop those ongoing, sustainable uh, personal. So um, it is actually something that we, we should all try and do is to develop those ongoing, sustainable uh, personal habits. Following up, Mr. Kirky. Uh, yeah, I guess you sort of touched on this, but reducing contacts also doesn't really take into account that we come to this from very different realities. Following up, Mr. Kirky. Uh, yeah, I guess you sort of touched on this, but reducing contacts also doesn't really take into account that we come to this from very different realities, right? Not everyone has the luxury of working from home, for example, and people in low-income jobs, uh, personal support workers, some frontline workers, they have to take public transit, they are exposed at work, they often live in congested home, for example. And people in low-income jobs, uh, personal support workers, some frontline workers, they have to take public transit. They are exposed at work. They often live in congested housing. How do they, they bring their contacts down 25%? So I said this is a um, community or whole of society estimate. Housing. How do they, they bring their contacts down 25%? So I said this is a um, community or whole of society estimate. What you brought up is exactly the sort of considerations that we have to um, take into account. Not every. What you brought up is exactly the sort of considerations that we have to um, take into account. Not everyone can stay at home and work. But we need to support essential workers who are bringing food to our tables, who are working in those grocery stores, and so um, home and work. But we need to support essential workers who are bringing food to our tables, who are working in those grocery stores, and so um, you know all the other supports come in to keep them working safely. So in order to minimise contacts in workplaces, that's actually quite important. I, I actually think to keep them working safely. So in order to minimize contacts in workplaces, that's actually quite important. I, I actually think places like grocery stores and certain settings have adapted over time. But there are other workplaces that haven't got into the habit of uh, putting in all those places like grocery stores and certain settings have adapted over time. But there are other workplaces that haven't got into the habit of uh, putting on all those measures. And so they need to also uh, up the game, as it were. Um, so I think it is, you know, it's really getting in line with all of those public measures. And so they need to 
also uh, up the game, as it were. Um, so I think it is, you know, really getting in line with all of those public me health measures, which is exactly what I said, is not everybody can keep to exact numbers. It depends on your situation, but collectively, we need to reduce those. Exactly what I said is not everybody can keep to exact numbers. It depends on your situation, but collectively, we need to reduce those contacts as much as possible. Merci. On va maintenant passer aux questions dans la salle pour le Premier ministre. Questions from the room for the Prime Minister. Hi, Prime Minister Rachel. Hay Merci. On va maintenant passer aux questions dans la salle pour le Premier ministre. Questions from the room for the Prime Minister. Hi, Prime Minister. Rachel Haynes from CTV National News here. Dr. Tam was just talking about this, about the modeling showing that we need to decrease contacts by 25 percent to get it under control. You gave a warning last month after your speech Haynes from CTV National News here. Dr. Tam was just talking about this, about the modeling showing that we need to decrease contacts by 25 percent to get it under control. You gave a warning last month after your speech from the throne, which included saying, limit your contacts. And that was over a month ago, and it does not seem to have worked. You say often that Canadians' efforts la worked last March, and that's how we were able to flatten the curve. Included saying, limit your contacts, and that was over a month ago, and it does not seem to have worked. You say often that Canadians' efforts la worked last March, and that's how we were able to flatten the curve. So would you support a full return to the measures that we saw in the spring, like widespread closures, to get this under control? I think, first of all, we are seeing that in certain areas full return to the measures that we saw in the spring, like widespread closures, to get this under control? I think, first of all, we are seeing that in certain areas the numbers seem to be leveling off. I certainly won't speak uh, for, uh, for Dr. Tam and the modeling, which was very, very clear, but we know uh, what bad behavior leads to leveling off. I certainly won't speak uh, for, uh, for Dr. Tam and the modeling, which was very, very clear, but we know uh, what bad behavior leads to. We know what when people uh, actually do follow instructions and manage to reduce their contacts and do the things that matter. Um, we know that we do see better outcomes, but we know what when people uh, actually do follow instructions and manage to reduce their contacts and do the things that matter. Um, we know that we do see better outcomes, but as we remember, as I was looking at that curve that showed the uh, case flow through the spring, uh, we shut down our economy and our community. We remember, as I was looking at that curve that showed the uh, case flow through the spring, uh, we shut down our economy and our communities and our country uh, in March, and yet uh, the curve continued for a number more months. And that's uh, what we really have to remember. This is temporary, but we have to get uh, in March. And yet uh, the curve continued for a number more months. And that's uh, what we really have to remember. This is temporary, but we have to get through it. We have to make sure that it's not just, okay, I'm going to hold down today and not, not see anyone or hold down today and tomorrow and this week. Uh, we have to continue to engage in not just, okay, I'm going to hold down today and not, not see anyone or hold down today and tomorrow and this week. Uh, we have to continue to engage in these behaviors even as it becomes frustrating. Now, we have so far been able to avoid uh, large-scale shutdowns, partially uh, because we now know much of these behaviors even as it becomes frustrating. Now, we have so far been able to avoid uh, large-scale shutdowns, partially uh, because we now know much more about COVID-19, what the challenges are, where uh, the challenging locations are for greater spreads. Uh, we are now wearing masks much more than we doubt COVID-19, what the challenges are, where uh, the challenging locations are for greater spreads. Uh, we are now wearing masks much more than we did in the spring. We are now uh, able to download a free COVID alert app uh, that helps uh, reduce the numbers and the contacts. Uh, we are able uh, to do things now, uh, able to download a free COVID alert app uh, that helps uh, reduce the numbers and the contacts. Uh, we are able uh, to do things now in a targeted way uh, that is uh, better able to prevent needing a very blunt instrument of a nationwide massive shutdown. Uh, but 
uh, that is uh, better able to prevent needing a very blunt instrument of a nationwide massive shutdown. Uh, but you're right, it takes time and we have to persevere. We have to know that we are going to get through this in the coming weeks and months, but it is going to take weeks and months and not just you're right. It takes time and we have to persevere. We have to know that we are going to get through this in the coming weeks and months, but it is going to take weeks and months and not just days. I think that we know that we all must act responsibly. I think that we know that we all must act responsibly. The reality is that we won't get through this crisis by only relying on public health. The reality is that we won't get through this crisis by only relying on public health or government measures. As individuals, we have to do our part to reduce our contacts, to be careful. But now we have more tools to do. As individuals, we have to do our part to reduce our contacts, to be careful. But now we have more tools to do that. We crack down with the big hammer of a national lockdown in the spring, but now our tools are to do that. De une, un confinement national we crack down with the big hammer of a national lockdown in the spring, but now our tools are more refined. We know which institutions and businesses are better placed, or rather are more at risk for outbreaks. Fine. We know which institutions and businesses are better placed or rather are more at risk for outbreaks, and therefore our approach is more targeted. And people are wearing masks more, more people are using the COVID alert app, and I encourage people to download it. Approach is more targeted. And people are wearing masks more, more people are using the COVID alert app, and I encourage people to download it. And these are some things that we can do to help control the second wave and limit outbreaks without, we hope, another national lockdown to help control the second wave and limit outbreaks without, we hope, another national lockdown. But it doesn't only depend on what the government and governments do or what public health does, it depends on what each of us does. But it doesn't only depend on what the government and governments do or what public health does. It depends on what each of us does and what each of us continues to do over the coming weeks. I'm talking about making informed decisions, being conscious about our behavior and saying, yes, we will get to continue to do over the coming weeks. I'm talking about making informed decisions, being conscious about our behavior and saying, yes, we will get through this. It's temporary, but it is going to last for weeks and months and not hours or days as we might prefer. We will get through it. It's temporary, but it is going to last for weeks and months and not hours or days as we might prefer. We will get through it. Steve Chase with the Globe and Mail. Good, good afternoon. I'd like to ask you about uh, the ongoing uh, war, the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, and the use of uh, Canadian Chase with the Globe and Mail. Good, good afternoon. I'd like to ask you about uh, the ongoing uh, war, the conflict in Nagorno-Karabakh, and the use of uh, Canadian airstrike targeting gear. Last week, the Armenian Prime Minister took to Twitter and Facebook, essentially a head of government, uh, raising. Uh, the fact that he'd found, they'd found uh, airstrike targeting gear. Last week, the Armenian Prime Minister took to Twitter and Facebook, essentially a head of government, uh, raising uh, the fact that he'd found, they'd found uh, Turkish-made drones with uh, Canadian airstrike gear, which we had sold to Turkey, not to Azerbaijan, but they're being used by Azerbaijanis. 
Uh, your government announced a month ago that Turkish-made drones with uh, Canadian airstrike gear, which we had sold to Turkey, not to Azerbaijan, but they're being used by Azerbaijanis. Uh, your government announced a month ago that you were investigating this. Uh, in the meantime, the Globe and Mail sent a photographer to Armenian military compound yesterday, took pictures of it. We've had it verified by arms researchers. So, uh, in the meantime, the Globe and Mail sent a photographer to Armenian military compound yesterday, took pictures of it. We've had it verified by arms researchers. So, uh, as far as we're concerned, it is indeed Canadian uh, gear being used by the Azerbaijanis, gear that was restricted and sold only to Turkey. So my question for you is, do you have anything to say to the Armenian Canadian uh, gear being used by the Azerbaijanis, gear that was restricted and sold only to Turkey? So my question for you is, do you have anything to say to the Armenian Prime Minister? And when, when, when will you cancel these permits? Uh, we took immediate action uh, on the situation uh, and we suspended uh, these export permits to Turkey. We need to... Prime Minister, and when, when, when will you cancel these permits? Uh, we took immediate action uh, on the situation uh, and we suspended uh, these export permits to Turkey. We need to make sure that the uh, rules and the agreements that are being, uh, that uh, were in place on the contract for, uh, for use uh, are being respected. Uh, we heard uh, that there were concerns that the uh, rules and the agreements that are being, uh, that uh, were in place on the contract for, uh, for use uh, are being respected. Uh, we heard uh, that there were concerns that there were not. And indeed, uh, we continue to see uh, examples and, and uh, evidence that they possibly were not. Uh, the Government of Canada launched an immediate follow-up uh, to ask. Uh, we continue to see uh, examples and, and uh, evidence that they possibly were not. Uh, the Government of Canada launched an immediate follow-up uh, to ascertain uh, exactly what was going on, and uh, we thank uh, all the uh, all the information that's been flowing in. We will continue to do uh, the work necessary uh, to ascertain this. On, and uh, we thank uh, all the uh, all the information that's been flowing in. We will continue to do uh, the work necessary uh, to ascertain this. Uh, but we're taking this very seriously. The situation in Nagorno-Karabakh remains uh, of utmost concern to us. Uh, I spoke directly with Prime Minister Pashinyan uh, a few weeks ago, uh, but we're taking this very seriously. The situation in Nagorno-Karabakh remains uh, of utmost concern to us. Uh, I spoke directly with Prime Minister Pashinyan uh, a few weeks ago, as well as to uh, President Erdogan, uh, insisting on uh, moving forward peacefully, uh, de-escalating, respecting the ceasefires. Uh, Minister uh, Champagne, to, uh, President Erdogan, uh, insisting on uh, moving forward peacefully, uh, de-escalating, respecting the ceasefires. Uh, Minister uh, Champagne uh, was in Europe uh, to engage with our allies on looking for uh, diplomatic solutions and de-escalation in the situation. We will continue uh, to take this seriously in all the different uh, to engage with our allies on looking for uh, diplomatic solutions and de-escalation in the situation. We will continue uh, to take this seriously in all the different ways that we can. Thank you. Next question. Good morning, Prime Minister Mercedes Stevenson, Global News. I know you have to be careful about what you say about other countries' elections, but... Thank you. Next question. Good morning, Prime Minister Mercedes Stevenson, Global News. I know you have to be careful about what you say about other countries' elections, but with so many eyes south of the border as we prepare for the election in the United States, you are a global leader. You are the prime minister of the country that has the most trade, the most military dependent, with so many eyes south of the border as we prepare for the election in the United States. You are a global leader. You are the prime minister of the country that has the most trade, the most military dependence on the United States. You've watched these two campaigns unfold, and you've never been shy about your values or your priorities. What has been your take on the Trump campaign in the United States? You've watched these two campaigns unfold, and you've never been shy about your values or your priorities. What has been your take on the Trump campaign and the Biden campaign in the United States? Uh as you know, Mercedes, I'm not going to comment uh, the election ongoing in uh, in the United States. I will say that as a government, our states. Uh, as you know, Mercedes, I'm not going to comment uh, the election ongoing in uh, in the United States. I will say that as a government, our responsibility has been 
uh, to be prepared for all different possible eventual outcomes. Uh, that means looking carefully at proposals made by the different uh, candidates. Be prepared for all different possible eventual outcomes. Uh, that means looking carefully at proposals made by the different uh, candidates for, uh, for this presidency and uh, understanding how to position Canada in the best way to defend Canadians' interests, to defend uh, our, uh, our values. And we will commit for, uh, for this presidency and uh, understanding how to position Canada in the best way to defend Canadians' interests, to defend uh, our, uh, our values, and we will continue to do that. Uh, we uh, will continue to seek to have the best possible relationship with the United States uh, going forward because it is so important to Canadians, and we will uh, look to think that. Uh, we uh, will continue to seek to have the best possible relationship with the United States uh, going forward because it is so important to Canadians. And we will uh, look to things that we can do together, regardless of ha what happens on, uh, uh, on Election Day next week. Uh, we will uh, be ready to work with uh, the American administration in ways that, will, regardless of ha what happens on, uh, uh, on Election Day next week, uh, we will uh, be ready to work with uh, the American administration in ways that will uh, support Canadians and support our values in the world. I will not be commenting on the American election, of course. Support our values in the world. I will not be commenting on the American election, of course, but I can reassure Canadians that from the start, we have been looking at potential impacts of this election. And we are prepared, but I can reassure Canadians that from the start, we have been looking at potential impacts of this election. And we are prepared for what could occur. We will work together, as we always have done, with the American administration for what could occur. We will work together, as we always have done, with the American administration to defend Canadian interests, to look for middle ground and common interests that we can work towards together. If there is a change on Tuesday, to look for middle ground and common interests that we can work towards together. If there is a change on Tuesday, or whether we continue with the same administration, either way we will be prepared, no matter what the outcome, prepared to work together with the Americans to defend Canadian values, and either way we will be prepared, no matter what the outcome, prepared to work together with the Americans to defend Canadian values and interests, and above all, to continue to have a positive impact in the world. David Thurton, CBC News. Um, Prime Minister, CBC News has reached out to a number of interests, and above all, to continue to have a positive impact in the world. David Thurton, CBC News. Um, Prime Minister, CBC News has reached out to a number, in fact, all communities on long-term water advisories. And a large number of them have told us that they probably won't see drinking water, safe drinking water, by the long-term water advisories. And a large number of them have told us that they probably won't see drinking water, safe drinking water, by the time your government has promised to lift those advisories, March 2021. Some say it will take years. So how do you explain this broken promise to First Nations? Advisories. March 2021. Some say it will take years. So how do you explain this broken promise to First Nations? Uh, we made a commitment in 2015 uh, that we would uh, fix this situation that had uh, dragged on for years, for decades, in far too many. Uh, we made a commitment in 2015 uh, that we would uh, fix this situation that had uh, dragged on for years, for decades, in far too many communities of non-safe drinking water, of long-term boil water advisories that were unacceptable in the country that has the largest freshwater reserves in the world, of non-safe drinking water, of long-term boil water advisories that were unacceptable in the country that has the largest freshwater reserves in the world. We needed to do right 
uh, in partnership with Indigenous peoples, and that's what we have focused on. Over the past years, uh, we've listed, lifted close to 100 long-term blight uh, in partnership with Indigenous peoples, and that's what we have focused on. Over the past years, uh, we've listed, lifted close to 100 long-term boil water advisories, many of which had been in place uh, for years and decades. We will continue to work in partnership with Indigenous communities, make the investments in place uh, for years and decades. We will continue to work in partnership with Indigenous communities, make the investments necessary to lift those long-term boil water advisories, to prevent short-term boil water advisories from flipping into long-term boil water advisories and preventing other necessary to lift those long-term boil water advisories, to prevent short-term boil water advisories from flipping into long-term boil water advisories and preventing other boil water advisories from coming in. Um, this is something we have worked diligently on and seen significant success uh, over the past number of years, but always um, the advisories from coming in. Um, this is something we have worked diligently on and seen significant success uh, over the past number of years, but always um, the communities that uh, we haven't been able to lift those advisories on continue to uh, struggle. So we will continue to work with them. As we said, the COVID situation haven't been able to lift those advisories on continue to uh, struggle. So we will continue to work with them. As we said, the COVID situation has made some of the timelines a little less certain, but we are still working very hard to reach our goal of lifting all long-term boil water advisories by the spring of 2021. We are still working very hard to reach our goal of lifting all long-term boil water advisories by the spring of 2021. And Thanks. Minister Miller can uh, add more, uh, more information to that uh, in a few minutes. Next question. Bonjour, uh, Monsieur Trudeau, Christian Noël de Radio Canada. Hello, Mr. Trudeau, Christian Monsieur Noël. Kenny, and Next. Minister Miller can uh, add more, uh, more information to that uh, in a few minutes. Next question. Bonjour, uh, Monsieur Trudeau, Christian Noël de Radio Canada. Hello, Mr. Trudeau, Christian Noël Kenny, from Radio Canada. Recently, recently you spoke to Mr. Kenny about Keystone. What uh, reassurance did you give him? regarding continuing this project, and uh, TAP. Recently, you spoke to Mr. Kenny about Keystone. What uh, reassurance did you give him regarding continuing this project? And uh, tell us a little about the coming weeks and months, what you will do to promote this uh, project in the States. Answer. The conversation I had with Premier Kenny, weeks and months, what you will do to promote this uh, project in the States. Answer. The conversation I had with Premier Kenny, of course, highlighted the fact that for seven years I have been supporting this Keystone XL project. It is a great way to the fact that for seven years I have been supporting this Keystone XL project. It is a great way to transport our oil and gas products with lower carbon emissions compared to transport our oil and gas products with lower carbon emissions compared to rail or road transport. Of course, we worked together with the TransCanada company, rail or road transport. Of course, we worked together with the TransCanada company, to ensure that there will be even more measures to protect the environment and to reduce emissions. This has been our a great to ensure that there will be even more measures to protect the environment and to reduce emissions. This has been our gov a great priority for our government for five years, and we are committed to reducing our emissions by putting forward a comprehensive plan to grow our economy and at the same time, and we are committed to reducing our emissions by putting forward a comprehensive plan to grow our economy and at the same time, 
fight climate change. We will continue to work together with Americans, no matter what the outcome of the election is. Time, fight climate change. We will continue to work together with Americans, no matter what the outcome of the election is to highlight how important it is to fight climate change, we will continue to create good jobs for now and for the decades to come. To highlight how important it is to fight climate change, we will continue to create good jobs for now and for the decades to come, particularly by working with our partners. And these are conversations we will continue to have. We'll take one last question in the room. Good day, Prime Minister. Uh, Mike Black. By working with our partners, and these are conversations we will continue to have. We'll take one last question in the room. Good day, Prime Minister. Uh, Mike Blanchfield, Canadian Press. Um, Aaron O'Toole is talking today about championing people who've been left behind by global trade, the decline of steady work, unequal access to education. Themes you. Aaron O'Toole is talking today about championing people who've been left behind by global trade, the decline of steady work, unequal access to education. Themes you've often talked about yourself, obviously, but you've been in power for five years. What do you wish you'd done differently so fewer people would feel that the system isn't working for them right now? Um, I think you've often talked about yourself, obviously, but you've been in power for five years. What do you wish you'd done differently so fewer people would feel that the system isn't working for them right now? Um, I think when we look at the record over the past five years, uh, it's a record that has been focused on people. We uh, lifted close to a million Canadians out of poverty. Uh, with a look at the record over the past five years, uh, it's a record that has been focused on people. Uh, we uh, lifted close to a million Canadians out of poverty uh, with investments that we've made, uh, including 300,000 children. Uh, we, see, we saw over a million new jobs created uh, in the first uh, five years, uh, including 300,000 children. Uh, we see we saw over a million new jobs created uh, in the first uh, five years uh, in office. Obviously, we have uh, we're going through a pandemic right now that has highlighted the incredible amount of work there is still to do on things like how we have uh, we're going through a pandemic right now that has highlighted the incredible amount of work there is still to do on things like housing and homelessness on things uh, like vulnerable Canadians, on issues like childcare and access to medications, which are all things that we've highlighted, not just in our recent throne speech, housing and homelessness, on things uh, like vulnerable Canadians, on issues like childcare and access to medications, which are all things that we've highlighted, not just in our recent throne speech and in the one before that, but also that we've taken significant action on. Minister Hussein here, uh, uh, is, uh, uh, has made significant announcements this week on rapid housing for that, but also that we've taken significant action on. Minister Hussein here uh, uh, is, uh, uh, has made significant announcements this week on rapid housing initiatives to help the most vulnerable. Uh, and uh, we are excited to work with anyone, any party in the House, uh, that wants to uh, do more vulnerable. Uh, and uh, we are excited to work with anyone, any party in the House, uh, that wants to uh, do more to address the most vulnerable. During this pandemic, we made a commitment to Canadians that we would be there to have people's backs. And from the very beginning, we moved forward with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit. During this pandemic, we made a commitment to Canadians that we would be there to have people's backs. And from the very beginning, we moved forward with the Canada Emergency Response Benefit that benefited uh, over 8 million Canadians who'd lost their jobs, who needed supports. Now, Mr. O'Toole uh, said that we moved to, that benefited uh, over 8 million Canadians who'd lost their jobs, who needed supports. Now, Mr. O'Toole uh, said that we moved too quickly to help Canadians, that we should have uh, been focused on helping businesses instead. We helped businesses and workers but our first priority was supporting Canadians, particularly the most vulnerable, to help Canadians, that we should have uh, been focused on helping businesses instead. We helped businesses and workers, but our first priority was supporting Canadians, particularly the most vulnerable, 
We then flowed significant business support through the wage subsidy, through rental assistance, through rent assistance, through uh, the Canada Emergency Business Account, which we've further extended. Significant business support through the wage subsidy, through rental assistance, through rent assistance, through uh, the Canada Emergency Business Account, which we've further extended. We will continue to focus on supporting Canadians, particularly vulnerable Canadians, uh, through this crisis and beyond as we look to build back better. And I'm very pleased on supporting Canadians, particularly vulnerable Canadians, uh, through this crisis and beyond as we look to build back better. And I'm very pleased to work with anyone uh, in the House of Commons who wants to continue to work with us on support for the most vulnerable. It has been at the core of everything we've done as a government and certainly to work with anyone uh, in the House of Commons who wants to continue to work with us on support for the most vulnerable. It has been at the core of everything we've done as a government and certainly during this pandemic we've had many opportunities to demonstrate it in real tangible terms for millions of Canadians. Thank you very much. In this pandemic, we've had many opportunities to demonstrate it in real, tangible terms for millions of Canadians. Thank you very much, Prime Minister. That's all the time we have for today. Mr. Biden gets elected. For today. Mr. Biden gets elected. Dr. Tam, uh, I notice in your charts today that um, you said Dr. Tam, uh, I notice in your charts today that um, you said you're seeing um, outbreaks occur in several of the same settings, but this time actually uh, it looks like I I'm curious about why there's so many outbreaks in healthcare settings. What's going wrong? How come they have um, outbreaks occur in several of the same settings, but this time actually uh, it looks like I I'm curious about why there's so many outbreaks in healthcare settings. What's going wrong? How come they haven't figured out how to how to